What we're looking at this morning um, is just one more illustration of how complex numbers in a real way is kind of like the apex of so much mathematics that you've been learning over the last 11 years, right? It's like all of these notes that you've been striking in geometry, in tree, even just in normal number arithmetic and stuff like that, um, it leads here and it finds it's like... Um, it's crescendo here, okay? Uh, trigonometric identities, you, you've been learning them under, um, under two unit and extension one for quite some time now. But um, we, we sort of stop at a certain point because it becomes impractical to go any further. So let me try and illustrate that for you, right? Um, put your extension one hat on, okay? And let's just think about some of the basic tree uh, extensions like these two. Okay, we can quote these results, can't we? Side two theta is? Two sine theta cos theta. Thank you very much. And cos two theta, on the other hand, is cos squared minus sine squared. Cos squared theta minus sine squared. Okay, now, where did these come from? Where did we get these from? How did we prove that these were the case? Does anyone remember? What did we use? Yeah, go ahead. Um, like, double, double angle, like when you're adding two angles together. Good. So this is, this double angle formula is really just a specific instance of when you're adding two angles together, any two angles you want. Um, for instance, sine you know, A plus B, where A and B are the same angle. And, and then your two angles become double angle formula. Okay, now we have a result for this, cos A sine B plus uh, sine A cos B, is, that's the expansion and the corresponding one for cos. Where did that come from? Where did it begin? Been a while. Now, I, this is not a, it's not a proof you need, so it's, it's not that big a deal if you've forgotten it. Uh, we, you generally, and there's a whole variety of ways to do this, but generally we sort of construct some funky triangles that relate to each other and um, there's going to be, you know, for example, um, the construction that I know off the top of my head looks something like this, yeah. uh, like that, and then you've got an angle A, a here, an angle B here, and when you go around and you do, use all the right angle triangles and you say, look, sine A plus B, there's sine A plus B, right, will be, good morning, will be opposite on hypotenuse. So all you have to do is work out what those are in terms of the geometry of this construction that you make, and um, out comes your identity, right? So we went from here to here, to here, okay? And this is generally where we stop. Now, once upon a time, going further than this was in the syllabus, was mandated. You needed to know more um, identities than just this. For instance, you needed to know this and the corresponding one for cosine, right? So, aptly named, these are the um, triple angle formulas. Now, using the knowledge that you have now, morning, how would you go about developing this formula, yeah, me too. Fantastic. Okay, so this is just again another instance of this guy, right? Except my a and b are two theta and theta, and then you can kind of sift it down from there. And there's no there's no problem with that. Okay, um, you can actually get this result. Let's just quickly have a go. And, and remembering trig identities um, mean that there's a variety of ways to say, thing in the sim say things in the simplest form. But let's just have a go and see where we end up, right? If it's sine 2 theta plus theta, this is our a and b. Just what's our, what's our straight extension of this using, using this? Starts with a cos. Yeah. Cos 2 theta. Sine theta, very good. Plus. <coughs> sine 2 theta. Plus theta. Okay, now that's true, but it's not particularly simple. What else could I do from here? Where else could I go? Yeah, good. I've got a, a pair of double angle identities here that I can take advantage of. So, <coughs> excuse me, um, over here, I've got that cos 2 theta. I could write it as cos squared minus sine squared, but being that I want to simplify down as far as I possibly can, maybe it might be better to write it as, remember, there's a couple of other forms. For this guy, do you remember what the other forms are? Okay, so that cos squared, using the Pythagorean identity, is 1 minus sine squared. So being that there's another minus sine squared on there, I could write it like so. That would work. What was the other form? What else could I use? 2 cos squared minus 1, because you just take, instead of translating that into 1 minus sine squared, you translate that into 1 minus cos squared, and out it comes. Okay. Uh, which form would you prefer? 1 or 2? 
Uh, interestingly, just by convention, okay, can, can I say, out of, out of these two, th there is not one that is more obviously simple than the other. Like, they're, they're both quadratics in a tree, basic tree function, okay? So, I don't think one is clearer than the other, but by convention, because it starts with sine, most people want it in terms of sine. Like, that's, that's what I'm converting down here. Does, does that make sense? So, in some ways, what I'm about to do is arbitrary, but it's what most people arbitrarily do. So, I'm going to substitute 1 minus 2 sine squared. Okay? Um, I know what sine 2 theta is. It's right there. Okay? So, I've got 2 sine theta. Now, I would normally write cos theta, but there's another cos theta hanging on the end there. Right? So, this is cos squared theta. Ah, now there's one more substitution that I can make, right? Uh, let's expand this and then do that substitution. So here, uh, I've got sine theta, take away two sine cubed. Two sine cubed. Okay, so far so good. Over here, I'm going to have two sine theta times what? One, one, minus, one minus sine squared. squared. And now you can kind of see why, ooh, now, now everything's in terms of signs, and I've gotten rid of all of my double or triple angles or anything. So, so objectively at least, I think this is simpler, right? Um, how would I simplify this? What have I got left? I've got a sine theta plus two sine theta. That's all of my just regular sine theta terms. So it looks like three sine theta to me. And then what else do I have? Minus four sine theta. Yeah, there's... Minus 2 sine cubed here, and then there will be another minus 2 sine cubed here, right? Minus so hence, four sine cubed. minus 4 sine cubed. I suppose I could now at this point factorize out a sine theta, but most people do not, they just kind of leave it there. Okay? Now, this is, that was not unreasonable. Like, going from here to here, it wasn't like a crazy number of lines, but you can start to realize this is not, if you remember back when we were, um, come back for a second into the complex world for a minute, and when we were solving this, we could solve this in rectangular form. Do you remember that? Like, I didn't need to appeal to mod arg form to do this, okay? Um, I could do this, and then I could factorize this guy. Um, I could say this. And then your linear factorization is not that hard, okay? But then when I said, well, when we look at this, you're like, oh, gross, <laughs> right? Like, I can factorize it, but it's going to be terrible. Like, in polynomial terms, it's, it's kind of gross, right? So therefore, the rectangular way, even though it worked, it didn't end up being very versatile. It didn't take us very far. Um, it was a method that quickly ran into, like, an upper limit for when it was practical, right? And can you, can you see, the same thing is happening here, right? Do you really want to do sine 4 theta? 5 theta or 6 theta, like this was how bad it was just for 3, okay? I don't even want to go there. Okay? So therefore the question is, being that complex numbers, and particularly De Marvel's theorem, right, have connected us to a way of thinking about angles and when they increase at a, um, as, as in multiples, right? Because that's what appears in De Marvel's theorem. You've got the sine n theta and the um, cos n theta there inside the brackets, right? How can we take advantage of that?